Hi everyone, it's me again. And uh, for those who join it uh, later, I'm Bahija Gwimi, Council Member of APIS 2022. Thank you for joining us. The purpose of this session is to discuss co-creating digital solution with healthcare consumers. As you may know, digital health has an important role to play in reducing the, 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 the burden of healthcare system across the world. Uh, as it enables uh, wider access to healthcare solutions that should be patient-centered. I had the opportunity to participate uh, uh, to, this, to the APIS pre-summit workshop about uh, patient engagement in development of digital health solution with innovator, patient leaders, and members of uh, uh, health industry. Today, we will discuss how to co-create patient-centric digital tools to improve patients' uh, uh, outcomes by sharing three personas and validate the pre-summit workshop learning. It's supposed to be an interactive and engaging session, meaning they are going to have some polls to be sure to have two-way communication. For the post-summit, we are preparing also a recommendation report thanks to the efforts of all partners to recommend key principles and methodologies that guide the meaningful co-creation of patient-centric digital solution. So let's start. I will share with you the first persona, the story of Esther. Esther is a 42 years old uh, uh, working mother for Northern Africa, recently diagnosed with uh, uh, hormone receptor positive, her uh, to a negative breast cancer. And while diagnosed early in the progression of the disease, Esther is already thinking about her family and her career uh, and the effects treatments will have on them. As she is a really, uh, uh, specialist in a nearby public hospital. Esther is familiar with technology, but aside, aside from uh, what her 12 and 14 years old daughter share with her, uh, has no social media accounts on her own. Now, uh, uh, the question is, next please. Next, please. The question number one, we will start the poll questions. And the question number one, uh, which of the following communication uh, uh, channels do you use every day to access health information? And you have four options. You can choose one of them. You can scan also the QR code to have the possibility to answer. <clears throat> and uh, of course, use your language, your own language. Still have five seconds to collect answers. As I mentioned, you have four options. Great. I will, I will continue the persona of Esther. Esther accompanied by her husband uh, have met twice with her primary care physician and once with her oncologist to have an initial discussion about baseline labs, potential treatment plans, and what the next six months will look like for her and her family. However, Esther remains unsure and worried about her treatment plan and feels disconnected from her oncologist. In addition, she doesn't know anyone else who had cancer and doesn't understand how she got it, how the treatment works, and why she requires two forms of therapy. And maybe if she did something that caused her to get cancer. 
The following week, Esther is introduced to her senior nursing care team, a department the hospital only just uh, created two months ago. This care team explained how to navigate her hospital system, but fails to provide resources for community and peer groups who can help her and her family navigate her journey through cancer treatment. Next, please. Question number two. What is your preferred way to have an ongoing dialogue and effectively engage with industry, digital health innovator and hospital? And you have, again, four options. You can choose what do you want. Well, next, please. Yeah, I, I don't have the results. I'm sorry. I don't have the I, I thought we will have, we will share in the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Great. And the answer is focus group. We have 86% focus group, adversary board patient, counsels on regular interval. Uh, I think uh, the first, this is the first option. I'm sorry, this is B. Uh, now uh, we will continue the Esther uh, persona. Friend from work tells Esther that she has uh, uh, recently read about a mobile, mobile app for cancer patients that uses GPS and active user input like pins, tags, comments, uploaded uh, photo, etc., to create a database of cancer resources, support groups, and events also mapping the location of these resources on a user-friendly map. Next, please. Question number three. If you were to be Esther on a scale from one to ten, one being not interested and ten being very interested, interested how interested would you be to download an app like this? Yes. Yes, uh, more more time for you to to answer. Okay. Now we wait more five seconds to collect answers from the idioms. And we have uh, very interested, I think, very interested. I can't see the, 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 the answer, but uh, very interested. I think 29% uh, And we can guess, very interesting. Let's continue uh, Esther's stories. Uh, sorry, uh, Esther's friend read about this app because they are now in the debated phase for testing uh, a future where cancer sh champions, survivors, and advocates can safely submit their own information. Location at a coffee shop, time and place of a cancer awareness event, live video streaming, etc. So that newly diagnosed patients or those feeling lost in the system can find an advocate in their community to talk to directly or engage over a digital platforms. This Esther download download. Uh, I'm sorry, Esther downloads the, the app and sign up for an account, but does not yet engage in the platform. She begins her treatment within the following two weeks and within a month 
feels she needs to be more engaged with her treatment plan, her primary care physician, and her oncologist. The question number four, next please. What is the best way patients will, with low digital literacy in low and middle income countries can use and scale digital health solutions? And we have three options. I think uh, four or three, four, sorry, four options. Four options. And please choose your answer. We'll give you more five seconds to be sure to collect answers from your from, from the audience and a few seconds the results will appear and the answer uh, seven, uh, 75% is build capacities of user and include support feature available online over phone and video chat. Thank you. Let's continue the, the story of Esther. Next, please. Esther joins a hospital-based digital platform where using her medical record number, she can connect directly with her doctors to ask questions, clarify treatment information and get notices on her next appointment. The platform also includes a patient forum where she can engage other patients currently in treatment to build her support system. The five, uh, the question number five now, next please. How, how can patient uh, information be kept confidential and private so that information given and received on open forums is appropriate and accurate. And you have two, uh, four options, four options to answer. And please choose only one option. Now the agency are, is collecting answers and the results will appear on the screen in a few seconds. <clears throat> and uh, we have 75% uh, both A and B uh, uh, as uh, an answer. Next, please. And Esther now feels, I'm sorry. Yes, just to continue about Esther, Esther, uh, uh, now feels she has the start of a strong medical, psychological, and uh, social support system for her journey. We still have uh, uh, two more questions for you. And uh, the first one, which of the activities listed below uh, would you pr prioritize to address the need to improve digital education and communication among patients? And you have A and B as, uh, as options. Please choose one. Give you some time to answer and then we can collect results. We have option A and option B. And we have again 100% uh, for uh, a multi-stakeholder mapping and analysis to uh, identify the right people at the right time to engage in creating discussion forum. Uh, I think no, it's not 100%, 50, uh, 55, uh, 75, 80, 80%, 83%, almost, almost uh, uh, the, the, first, uh, the first option, option A. Uh, now the, the next please. 
we have the last question for you. Would you like to be involved in a training and capacity building needs assessment to increase disease awareness and digital health education among stakeholders, patients, advocacy groups, and other digital health? And you have two easy answer, no or yes. We have two options, one or A, and the second option, B for yes. And uh, the answer, I think this, this is the final answer now. It's yes, definitely I would like to be involved in the assessment to share my needs to build capacities. Thank you very much uh, for your participation and interaction. So now we, uh, we are moving to the next uh, persona and let me introduce our next speaker. Um, Extremely delighted to introduce Jan Gessler, uh, CML advocate and digital innovator. He is the co-founder of CML Advocate Network, Lucanet, Wiccan, Opati, European Patients Academy on Therapeutic Innovation and other great in initiatives. Jan, I, I want to congratulate you because yesterday you was awarded by uh, International CML Foundation Prize for your amazing advocacy work and your great collaboration and contribution to improving patients' lives globally. I'm very proud to work with you for many years. Thank you, Jan, for being here. The stage is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Bahija, for your um, um, uh, introduction. I'm really moved. And um, I must say, I need to return that. Uh, the past 20 years of patient advocacy have been amazing. And uh, working with you on CML Advocates and many other things has been always such a pleasure. You've give, given me so, much, so, so many insights into different activities in your region and other regions and have opened up my mind about so many things. So thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me to this, to this panel. So um, it's very important to talk about digital. And if we talk about Ahmed, which I'm going to introduce you in a moment. I just want to give a bit of background because in the preparatory workshop, we talked a lot about education and communication. So how to empower patients to take control, how to create feedback loops to the patient, uh, how to enhance the communication with the doctor, and also how, what's the value of digital tools. And um, actually, when we talk about Ahmed as a persona, he's an example um, of how things can go in a patient journey. And of course, we have a couple of questions for you uh, around that to actually better understand your perception as participants of this conference about what Ahmed should do, what could have been uh, made differently and how patients could be engaged. So I'll introduce you to Ahmed. Ahmed uh, is, is actually is living outside of Ankara. He's 63 years old. Uh, he lives with his wife, son and elderly mother-in-law. He's a day laborer, but is out of, out of work because he recently had a heart condition he's been having um, while he was on the job. Um, he experienced a heart attack, is now on medications and has made life, lifestyle changes to prevent another heart attack. So if we ask the first question to you, actually, at this time, what is the most useful information that Ahmed could have received from a digital health tool? And you can see the different responses now on screen and please join Slido. I'm just reading down the English versions of it, but you can see the different translations on Slido and also here on the screen. So and answer one is secondary prevention education. The second option is support for loss of job and finances. Uh, the third option is information local support groups. And the fourth one, you can provide your ideas. So please go to Slido now and uh, provide your ideas there.
Okay, can we see the results for a moment? Oh, very good. It's good to see that there's uh, different opinions about what is probably most useful information Ahmed could have received. Um, thank you so much for that. And I'm going to move on. So at the moment, he's being seen as an outpatient by a cardiovascular physician at a public hospital about 40 kilometers away from where he lives. To lessen the number of trips he has to make to the hospital, he's been given a remote heart, a heart monitoring device and has been instructed to wear it now after he has been experiencing uh, a heart attack last year. So now another question to you, where should patients and advocacy groups be involved in the digital health tool so that the right information can be provided to the cardiovascular physician and to the patient's entire medical team? And you can see the different options here again, which is actually five options. It's um, uh, which information can be provided, design, development, testing, data analysis, and impact assessment. So I'll give you some time to respond to this question. All right, this is interesting. You can see where should patients be involved in digital health tool so the right information can be provided uh, to the physician. And it's, it's very surprising and very good that you said data analysis is actually the most important thing and also impact assessment. Because when we have these kind of digital tools, one thing is the data and the other thing is how to interpret that. And how can, how can the physician see the context of the data provided? It's by patients being involved in analyzing the data that the solution provides, but also the impact assessment. So what impact does it have to have that heart monitor or digital solution like that um, on the course and the journey of the patient? So thank you so much for, for that. And I don't want to downvalue testing and design, uh, but thank you so much for your, for your thoughts about that. So now continuing with the story of of Ahmed. Uh, actually, after his, um, uh, while ta talking to his wife, um, Ahmed reflects on the positive and negative experiences he had since his heart attack. When he was di discharged from the hospital last year, he was given a follow-up appointment with a private clinic because this location was the only place that had the availability within the frame, uh, time frame he actually needed in his condition. However, this clinician spent less than five minutes talking to, to him and quickly moved on to his next patient. So now let's think again about digital tools. So the next, next question to you. Tools that are built under the principles of digital empathy, so being professional, be continuous, be thoughtful. A single digital health solution that Ahmed is able to use could improve his experience as a recovering uh, patient with a cardiovascular disease. Which one of the evidence, which one of the evidence-based strategies would you recommend to digital health innovators for low income, low digital literacy, recovering cardiovascular disease patients at the topmost priority? And again, you have four different options to respond to that, engaging the patients, entrusting, encouraging, empowering. So what's the right, um, uh, what, what's the right answer to that from your perspective? And there's a second question in the same uh, slider poll, which says, would you want to want the opportunity to validate this evidence-based information? Yes or no? So please go to Slido now and respond to those questions.
All right, thank you so thank you so much. And you can clearly see empowering and engaging are the topmost um, things on that survey. Uh, so thank you and building trust. It's really hard to decide, and you can see the split opinions on that of those who responded because all of them are, of course, very important and probably equally important if you look at the the results of the poll. So let's let's move on with ah Ahmed's story now. A year later, Ahmed has a better understanding on how to manage his condition, uh, who to engage if he has questions, and the basic things he could do himself to manage his cardiovascular condition. He's worn the heart monitor three times since his heart attack, and each time he has received feedback from his cardiovascular physician and has been contacted with any adjustments to his treatment plan. Each time he, has, he is asked to fill out a simple survey asking about his experience with a heart monitor. He has filled out the survey thoughtfully each time. However, he does not understand whether or not his, response, his responses are received or read, whether anyone takes, takes notice of what, what he does with the service, how they might be incorporated into quality improvement of the device, or whether or not his specific input is considered by his physician to be weaved into his own custom cardiovascular care plan. So in the end, he has the device, he's been asked for opinion, but he has no idea what hap what's happening with that. So now, and again, a question to you, what's your preferred way to create a sustained two-way communication channel? First option is A, an interactive online platform, B, live social media question and answers from digital innovators in industry. And the third option is a platform for sharing patient journeys for all stakeholders to respond and share ideas. So please respond to this slide now. Okay, very good. I can see your responses um, and you're very clear about a platform sharing patient journeys for all stakeholders to respond and share is at the moment the top runner, but you can still continue to respond to that interactive online platform. So platforms seem to be the key thing for you. And thank you for that kind of input. So now moving on. Um, he, um, Ahmed actually decides to schedule an appointment with his cardiovascular physician to re review the results of the heart monitor that he's been wearing for a time. He discussed his symptoms, his energy level, and how he feels like a burden to the family. Um, his physician, who lives uh, with a cardiovascular disease himself, takes into account Ahmed's situation and thoughts and begins to weave him his own, weave him his own uh, experiences, both as a patient and a doctor. He realizes he cannot address all of Ahmed's concerns, but does his best to encourage him to keep doing his best. So now the final question to you, actually. In the development of a digital health tool, should patients lead the way in that development? The very simple yes or no question this time. So please go to Slido and think whether patients should lead the way or whether, whether under, others should actually take the lead because they might be the experts in developing such a solution. So please respond now. So I think your responses here are very clear because it's a clear call for patient involvement on the digital health tools and leadership of the patient community in those with all the complexities that this brings. But I hope that Ahmed's story could actually give you some kind of context where the issues are feedback loops, co-design, uh, implementation, putting it into reality of real patients and doctor patient communication. So there are a lot of issues. I really thank you for all the input you've given. And finally, before we wrap up my part of this, of this session, there are two more questions we have for you as a, as a general poll, taking it away from Ahmed's story 
into general questions. So question one is actually, it takes all stakeholders involvement to improve the data collection process so that everyone, the patients, the digital health innovators and clinicians can benefit from improved patient engagement. But what form of engagement would be the most, would be most interesting um, for you and would, that would help the um, data collection process. Again, you see three different responses. I'm not going to read them down now. You can go to Slido and see them in your language. And please respond to that poll now. So I'm really curious what we're going to have as results here. So can we see the results? Uh, I think that's question two. All right, there it is. Patient Advocate Working Group is the front runner at the moment. Plus, but please keep, keep on doing the responses um, for that. And we're going to look at those while we're responding to the poll. So patient advocate working group and newly created patient nights uh, that actually help to um, uh, look at the prototypes and so on seem to be the front runners here. And clearly landscape analysis was not your favorite option uh, for you. Thank you so much for your responses. And finally, poll question two, would a structured tool or guidance manual be useful to map the gaps in patient data capture process? So the gaps, how to actually get the data from patients, how to capture it, flow and analysis towards improved digital health solutions that are patient-centric. So again, three options, yes, no, or not right now, but I would be interested to find out more about this. So please go to Slido for this final poll. Okay, can we bring up the results, please? Okay, a clear call of interest um, for the, to, the, the guidance manual and also interest, even though not right now, then later, but nobody said no so far. So that's very telling. Thank you so much for engaging on Ahmed. And now actually it's my job to hand over to Adam Chi. Thank you so much for listening to this part of the presentation and for all your input. Now, Adam, um, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to present the next and last uh, persona. Uh, if I can have the slides, please. So I'm gonna to present to you May from Asia. Now, May is a 22-year-old caregiver for her aunt who was diagnosed with a rare but serious disease three years ago. Now, she and her entire family live together in a large house in Ho Chi Minh City over in Vietnam and have a relatively comfortable lifestyle. During the diagnosis and planning stages of her aunt's disease, May played a key role in organizing, explaining and taking part in decisions for her aunt and uncle. Now, this brings me to the first question. For me to have all the resources and information she needs, who are the partners, the patient advocacy groups, uh, and may should contact to expand their networks. So if I could trouble the audience to uh, proceed to Slido and key in their uh, preference of choices from the uh, five options available, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, four options. So policymakers, industry, other patient groups, or others where you can specify 
uh, your input. Let us pull out the results as and when they are available. Uh, so we have a clear indication that uh, the preference is for other patients group. I'm going to continue on to persona. Um, as her aunt's conditions worsened, she also became a physical caretaker and helped her aunt get around town and complete her errands. Now, May is digitally savvy and engaged early in online platforms and research tools that may help her and her aunt and uncle in the disease journey. Now, the thing is, the first tool she used was inadequate and completely not user-friendly. So what May did is contact the developer as well as the patient advocacy group she was connected to and submitted some feedbacks based on both her experience as a digital entrepreneur as well as a caregiver. This brings to my second question, uh, which is product development cycles are long and there is a lack of patient participation in health policy discussions to evaluate new technologies. Which one is the most practical and useful way for patients and advocates to be involved in lobbying policymakers to change policies? Please kindly select the option that resonates most to you, which would be a direct communication with policymakers and relevant stakeholders, B, organizations of multiple events, awards, or flash mobs, and participation in relevant meetings, or it could be C, the use of social media, D, the establishment of links with networks, E, participation in projects and campaigns, or F, where you can input uh, your answer. Let us wait for the uh, results as and when they are available. Oh, interesting. So there's actually a clear preference towards direct communication with uh, the relevant policies, makers, stakeholders, use of social media. Oh, no, answers are changing. That's great. So direct communication would be the best. Fantastic. Uh, can I move on to the next part of the persona, please? Let me continue with the persona. Now, fast forward three years later, May has not seen any changes to the app uh, she used to use. And the thing is now she is a community activist advocating for the rights and voices of patients with rare disease. She meets with advocacy groups, speaks at local events, and write letters to local, regional, and national health leaders in Vietnam, talking about the need, needs to be changed in the health systems as well as the health policies. However, she wants to do more. Among her digital entrepreneur friends, May has heard of this concept known as the clinic, clinical clinician night where digital innovators present their prototypes to clinicians for their feedback. This brings me to my next question. Can there be clinician and patient nights so the two can be considered, uh, can consider the values and needs of both stakeholders? So can I trouble all of you to key in the answer that resonates most with you? It's either a yes, or a no. Just kindly flash the answer as and when they are available. Oh, so there you go. Most of us do think that there can be a nice balance. Oh, some, some do have a, a different opinion. No worries. Let me continue on with the next um, part of the persona. Now, so May thinks, why can't they be also patient nights where patients are presented with the prototypes and given the opportunity to give their feedback before the tool is actually launched so changes can be incorporated? Now, this brings me to my next question. 
on a scale from one to 10, where one being not valuable and 10 being extremely impactful, can patient nights, in your opinion, be used where digital innovators can consider the input of the patient in their digital uh, health solution? Please kindly uh, input uh, the answer uh, that resonates most with you. And I believe there will be a simple yes, no. I kind of trouble the technical uh, support to flash the answer as and when they are available. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Looks positive. Oh, great. Okay, uh, please allow me to move on to the next part of the persona. Now, May starts talking regularly to a digital health to developer about a tool that can be developed that will consider the needs of patients better than current tools. Uh, May believes that tools cannot be customized, but they, that they need to be specialized to a targeted group of people. So she tells her developer friend, uh, which is my next question. Which indicator? Uh, should be top most priority for patients and caregivers to assess uh, use and impact of digital health tools. Please kindly select um, the option that resonates most to you, which would be A, health and clinical outcomes, B, psychological and behavior outcomes, C, use of healthcare services, the usability and adaptability of system, and the uh, whichever answer that uh, you would like to input. Uh, yes. Uh, we have seen the answer. Uh, so close to half actually choose um, health and clinical outcomes. Right. Can I move on to the next slide, please? So the, the last question before we move on to the poll is uh, for the audience, how useful would a structured way to guide and include impact measures for patients into a digital health tool uh, on a scale to one to 10 uh, in your opinion, with one being not valuable and 10 being very impactful. Can I trouble the audience to key in the numeric value that correspond uh, to your answer? Can we pull out the answer uh, as and when they are available? Oh, so you can see a huge preference towards um, the higher aspects of the uh, value stream. <clears throat> Fantastic, that actually comes to the end of the persona, but I do have two more poll questions. I would like to um, seek the audience uh, for input. So poll question number one, would a multi-stakeholder analysis of key digital health partners be a helpful tool in your country for your advocacy group? So this would be a simple yes or no. Uh, if it's a no, please kindly do provide also, um, uh, you know, sorry. So this will be a simple yes or no, yeah. Similarly, let us pull the answers as and when they are available.
So for a poll question like this, it really depends on the country you are because this may not necessarily be a even distribution of um, advocacy work and resources. But it's uh, heartening to see that majority do respond to yes. Can I move on to the second poll question, please? Poll question number two would be to improve two-way communication and provide the space to show the value and impact of patient voice in the development of a digital tool. Would you be a part of a neutral online platform for submitting feedback, actively taking part in the progress and development of digital tools and sharing your experience and journey? So it is really a poll uh, to indicate um, the willingness to call to action. So can I have your answers, please? It would be a simple yes or no. Yes, we still have time to do a Q&A session. No time for question. I don't know if Dio is here. Can we pull the answers as and when they're available? Also, this is great. You see a resounding 100%. Uh, with that, I conclude my part of the um, uh, persona, and I believe I should return the stage to Bahija. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Adam, for your valuable inputs. Uh, there is only 10 minutes left uh, of our session, and now uh, we open the floor for questions. And I invite, uh, I invite you uh, to, to open the chat box and you can post your question. We will try to answer the maximum we, we, we can. Great, I have a question for you, Adam. Uh, uh, thank you again for your presentation. Uh, and my question is, what is the, the biggest challenge uh, of co-creating a patient-centric app? Uh, I think the biggest challenge is having everybody, all stakeholders involved, be it when you're a patient uh, or the on the other side of the point, developing uh, policies or the app to clearly understand each other. So many times uh, it's really is a situation of miscommunication um, and not understanding each other's journeys, limitations and difficulties. Uh, so it is human nature to expect something that fits your need 100% to the T. Uh, fortunately, uh, as with all things in life, uh, that's not possible. Um, uh, but sometimes, you know, when we communicate and says, hey, I've given you my perspective. Uh, why are you not delivering what I want? Uh, so it's really a, a matter of communicating well with each other, understanding what each other uh, uh, really wants and have limitations, and then moving on from there. Thank you again. Uh, thank you so much, Adam. Uh, thank you so much, Jan, for your answers. Uh, we are uh, in the end of this session, uh, and uh, I would like uh, to thank everyone uh, who uh, joined us, and thanks for being here, and good luck to our five uh, finalists. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.